Dear students, under the topic Lagrange's linear partial differential equation, here we have problem 20, which is, a li which is little different from the previous problems that we have solved. The difference here will be, the, in our previous lectures, we solved problems where we have been using the method of grouping. And we have also solved problems where we have used the method of multipliers. Now in this problem, we are going to apply both the methods uh, one after the other. That is, to find one of the solution, we will be using the method of grouping. To find the other solution, we will be using the method of multipliers. So this is a problem where both the method methods are applied. That is the method of grouping and the method of multipliers as well. So as the first step, let us write the standard equation of the Lagrange's type. So this is the standard form of the Lagrange's equation. And comparing with this form, we observe that capital P is equal to Y plus Z, capital Q is equal to Z plus X, and capital R is equal to X plus Y. So we have taken and written P, Q and R. We shall now write the auxiliary equation. So the auxiliary equation of the standard form of the Lagrange's equation is given by dx by p equal to dy by q is equal to dz by r. Now let us substitute the values of p, q and r in this auxiliary equation. So this is what we get after substitution of p, q and r in the auxiliary equation. Let us mark these ratios as 1, 2 and 3. Now we have to compare the ratio and we have to check whether are we able to apply the method of multipliers. Dear students, now in this problem, we will be handling it with a little different method. Now these three equations, when we compare with one another, we will be not able to separate it by variable separable method. So method of grouping cannot be applied. And if we perform operations on this, we can try to rewrite these ratios in another way. But the method of multipliers cannot be adopted because while, per, while uh, performing operations on this, we cannot make the denominator as 0. As you can see, everything is y plus z, z plus x and x plus y. If you add or subtract or anything if you do, you won't be able to make the denominator as 0. So now here, we will be making few operations in these ratios and we will be solving the problem. Now, these three ratios will also be equal to, now, the, these three ratios will also be equal to, the operations that I am going to do is, for the for fourth ratio that I am going to obtain, what I am going to do is, I am going to subtract the second ratio from the first. So, what I will get, if I do 1 minus 2, so let me write it here. So, what is 1? In the numerator, we have dx. And here in 2 in the numerator we have dy. So dx minus dy divided by in the denominator you have y plus z. And then here you have z, my, z plus x. So it will be y plus z minus z and then minus x. And this ratio will also be equal to. Now the second operation that I am going to do is 2 minus 3. So, let me subtract third ratio from the second ratio. That is dy minus dz in the numerator. So, dy minus dz divided by z plus x and then minus x minus y. And this will also be equal to, so I am going to do 1 plus 2 plus 3. That is, I am going to add all the three ratios in the numerator and in the denominator separately. So, if I add what we, I will be getting dx plus dy plus dz divided by, if you see, y plus z plus z plus x plus x plus y in the denominator. So, remember, if you are performing an operation in the numerator, you should also perform that same operation in the denominator. And these three ratios will be also equal to those ratios which are obtained by operating on these three ratios. Now, let us simplify this. So, this will be what you will get from this. You will be getting it as dx minus dy divided by, now this plus z and minus z will get cancelled and you will be having y minus x. And this is equal to 
dy minus dz divided by this plus x and minus x will get cancelled and you will be having z minus y and that is equal to dx plus dy plus dz divided by now in the denominator we have 2x okay and then 2y and then 2z so what i will do i will take 2 in common and i can write it as x plus y plus z so now we shall mark the new ratios that we have obtained as 4 5 and 6 now we will try to compare these ratios so this is the method of solving the problem from the given ratios we have to perform operations and we should form new ratios and compare those ratios in order to solve the problem so let us try that now what we will do first we will compare the ratio 4 and ratio 5 so on comparing 4 and 5 let us first take and write this 4 and 5 that is dx minus dy divided by y minus x is equal to dy minus dz divided by z minus y. Now in this what I am going to do I can rewrite it as by taking the negative sign outside dx minus dy divided by minus of. So if I take the negative out you will be you can rewrite it as x minus y is equal to dy minus dz divided by minus of y minus z because i want to want to bring it in the same uh, form that is x and x y and y for that reason i have done this and i can cancel out these ne two negatives and so we get dx minus dy divided by x minus y is equal to dy minus dz divided by y minus z and always remember whenever you have the uh, differentiation of the denominator as the numerator then if you integrate it on both the sides then you will be you can write it as logarithm of the denominator it is a uh, it is a formula from uh, integral calculus so using that we can see that the differentiation of the denominator what is the differentiation of x it is dx minus differentiation of y is dy so x minus y when differentiated we get the numerator dx minus dy and so the integral of this can be written as logarithm of the denominator so we will get logarithm of x minus y is equal to on the right also the differentiation of the denominator is the numerator because when you differentiate y you get dy minus differentiation of z is dz so the differentiation of y minus z is dy minus dz and therefore on the right you can write it as logarithm of y minus z plus a law constant of integration log c1 and from this we obtain logarithm of x minus y minus logarithm of y minus z is equal to logarithm of c1 by using the logarithmic rule this is like log a minus log b so it will be logarithm of a by b so log of x minus y divided by y minus z will be equal to logarithm of c1 and therefore c1 will be equal to x minus y by y minus z so c1 is equal to x minus y by y minus z while comparing on both the sides and this implies the first solution u is equal to x minus y divided by y minus z so we have obtained the first solution so therefore from this c1 we got the first solution and we obtained the solution while comparing 4 and 5 now we shall find the other solution by comparing 4 and 6 or you can also choose 5 and 6 i am going to choose 4 and 6 and i am going to find the other solution so comparing 4 and 6 we get this so from this we can rewrite it as dx minus dy divided by i'm going to take the negative out here so that i can write it as x minus y is equal to dx plus dy plus dz divided by 2 multiplied with x plus y plus z now i'm going to take this 2 to the right and this negative to the right so what i will be getting 2 multiplied with dx minus dy divided by x minus y 
is equal to this negative sign goes to the right so minus multiplied with dx plus dy plus dz divided by x plus y plus z now we have to integrate on both the sides in order to find the solution v so integrating on both the sides we get it to be 2 multiplied with now if you see what is the differentiation of denominator if you differentiate x you will be getting dx minus differentiating y we get dy so the differentiation of the denominator is the numerator and therefore we can write this as logarithm of the denominator which is x minus y is equal to uh, here you have minus of and again here also the differentiation of the denominator is the numerator that is if you differentiate x you get dx plus differentiation of y is dy plus differentiation of z is dz so you have this uh, the differentiation of the denominator as the numerator and so this can be written as logarithm of x plus y plus z and plus a constant of integration log 2 log, log c2 now taking this negative logarithm of x plus y plus z to the left we will be getting and also on the left we have 2 over here which can be written in the power so logarithm of x minus y the whole square by the logarithmic rule if you have a log b you can write it as logarithm of b to the power a so here you have 2 log x minus y and so it can be written as logarithm of x minus y to the power 2 and when this negative sign uh, the term comes to the left it becomes positive logarithm of x plus y plus z and that is equal to log c2 now we know that log a plus log b is equal to log a b so logarithm of x minus y the whole square multiplied with x plus y plus z is equal to log c2 so on comparing both the sides c2 will be equal to this that is x minus y the whole square multiplied with x plus y plus z is equal to c2 and therefore this implies that the solution v is equal to x minus y the whole square multiplied with x plus y plus z so this is the solution v already we have obtained the solution u and now we have obtained the solution v and therefore the general solution can be written as phi of u comma v is equal to 0 and so we obtain phi of what is u we have here u is equal to x minus y by y minus z so we can write that so x minus y divided by y minus z comma v is x minus y the whole square multiplied with x plus y plus z and so this is equal to 0 is the general solution for the given Lagrange's linear partial differential equation. So I hope you would have understood this problem. Thank you.